So this handout from page 65 is really just helping us to try and understand what the logarithms are. And so logarithms are exponents. They are the inverse of our exponential function. So if I have y equals b to the x, this exponential function has me plug in a value for the exponent and then it outputs the answer to that. So for a logarithm, since it's the inverse, it's going to say, okay, well, instead of inputting for the exponent, we're going to flip-flop our x and our y. So we're looking at something like b to the y equals x. So for these ones, it's saying, okay, we know the answer to an exponent, so then our y value is the exponent that does that. So another way to write that, and that's what the purpose is, is for the log notation, is to say, okay, log base b of x equals y. But really all that's saying is what is the exponent on base b that makes So when we look at um, the first problem down here that says exponential form, we already know 3 to the 4th will be 81 since that's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And we get a 9 and a 9. And so, okay, we know that that's 81. So when we're talking about log form, the log is going to be there. And we have the same exact base. So that's what we call this number when we're in exponential form. And it's the same number when we're writing in log form. And so you can see that 81 here was the answer to our exponential expression. And so our answer to a log is the exponent that makes that happen. And so that would be a 4. So we know 3 to that 4th power equals 81. And so we can continue on with this. Let's see. Um, we have ooh, a negative exponent. So remember that means reciprocal or flip, which is why you can see a fraction going on here. And so it's something that you can take to the second power and flip and make 1 over 100. Well, that would have to be 10. We could have also looked over at our log form and seen there's a base 10. And so this also has to be a base 10. So then when we have our log form, we already know the answer to our exponent is 1 over 100. And so the question here is, what's the exponent? And so we already know from our exponential form that's going to be negative 2. So this says 10 to that exponent will equal 1 over 100. So for the next one, maybe you don't remember this kind of exponent, but anytime you have a fraction as an exponent, that's a rational exponent, that just means you're going to take the square root. So if you have a 1 half, 9 to the 1 half, just a little reminder, that's the square root of 9, which is 3. So if you have like 25 to the 1 half power, that just means take the square root of the 25, which gets you 5. And it doesn't have to be a half, it could be even something like to the one-third. So if I took like 27 to the one-third power, that just changes it to be the third root. So the third root of 27, which will be 3, since 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So just a little side note here for you. So then our job was to write this in log form. So we're going to start by writing log, where we have our base is 9. So I'm going to write a 9 here. And we know that... Um, the answer to our exponent is 3, so we're going to have log base 9 of 3. And then we already knew that that was equal to, had an exponent of 1 half, so log is equal to 1 half the exponent. So this shows you 9 to that power, 1 half, makes 3. And so we kind of got to go the other way, but we still see here's our base, so I'm going to write my base here. The log is always equal to the exponent, so this is my exponent. And we know the answer to that will be this part, which is the argument. And just reading the sentence, it says 7 to the 0 power equals 1, which we know is true. 
So then we have a few down here that we want to simplify. So you should pause it and try and check and see if you can do these things before you move on. Um, so we'll kind of continue here after your pause. So again, log's asking us for the exponent. So this is saying six to what power makes 216? There's a couple different ways that you could think about this. You could use your calculator and divide it out. Sometimes I'll even try and like break this up. Like, okay, six times what makes 216? Just to try and work on it a little bit. That's gonna be a 36. And so then 36 is six times six. So you can see right here that it takes three sixes in order to multiply to make 216. So we know that six to the third power is 216. So the answer to this logarithm is gonna be three. So then over here, we don't have a base written down here. If you don't see a base, remember that is a common log. So we have common log and we have natural log. So natural log was the one where we have ln written down and ln of x means we have a log, but the base is that irrational number e or about 2.7 common log, we write it as just log x, but really what it means is that we have a base of 10. And that base of 10 happens so much and so common that we just kind of drop that off. So this question here is saying 10 to some power has to equal 1 over, let's see, there's four zeros there, so that would be 10,000. So a reminder that if we're turning something into a fraction, we know that this exponent here has to be negative. And so you have to think about how many tens can we multiply to make 10,000? And you could break it apart to try and find that out. So like 10 times 1,000 is going to be 10,000. And then 1,000 is 10 times 100. And 100 is 10 times 10. So you can see that it takes four tens. And again, it's in the denominator. So this is going to be equal to Four, but don't forget, it's a negative to get that reciprocal. <clears throat> so this next one, we have a base of 27. So we're saying 27 to some power has to equal 3. Now, we have 27 turning into something smaller, and it's not a fraction, so it can't be a negative exponent. So it's got to be one of those rational exponents. And actually, that's the one that we had right up here. So that's going to be equal to the one-third power. So we know 27 to the one-third equals the third root of 27. So that will be 3. Now, natural log of e again, we kind of saw it just a second ago. That means we have a log base e. So if you want to rewrite it to see it, this might be nice. So we're trying to figure out what that is. So this says e to some power equals e. Well, that has to be a one. So natural log of e is just one. And this would also make sense because log or natural log has a base of e and e is the base for the exponential. So they're gonna undo each other since they're inverses of each other. Okay, so we're flipping over to the back page here and we're gonna look at some basic properties of log. And all of these properties are going to help us to solve equations with log. So the first one, log base b of one equals what? Well, this is just saying b to what? will equal one. We already know that anything to the zero power will equal one. So that's that property. The next one says we have a base B still, right? This is our base B to some power and that's supposed to equal B. Well, the only thing that could do that is one itself. So here is kind of what we saw on the previous page, but if you have that this base matches this base, then it ends up that they're gonna cancel each other and there's an exponent of one there. So we're left with one. The next one, we have a base of b, so we're saying b to some power has to equal b to the x. Well, that just tells us that it has to be x. And again, you can kind of see these are undoing each other. For the last one, 
this one is kind of funky looking because we have an exponential function here and our log is in the exponent. But again, we just know, well, we already know that when you have um, an exponential and you have a logarithm and they have the same base, they're going to undo each other because that's what inverse functions do. So we know that this is going to leave us with x. Um, it might be nice to see uh, an example. We have some numbers here. If you have something like um, 2 log base to, uh, let's say, 8. If I'm going to simplify that, I want to figure out this part first. But remember, this is saying 2 to some power equals 8. So that would have to be a 3. So this is really 2 to the third power. But what's 2 to that third power? Well, it takes us back to 8. Okay, so the other um, main rules for logs that we have are the product rule and the quotient rule and the power rule, which is really um, similar to the product rule. But um, what happens when you kind of think about that logarithms are like exponents. So if you think about what happens when you have exponents that are multiplied. So for example, like x to the fifth times x to the second power. What does that simplify to? Does it simplify to x to the tenth? Like five times two? No, it's going to become x to the 7th, where we really just add those two guys together. And that's because x to the 5th is like x, 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 and x to the 2nd is x, x. And so when you have all of those x's multiplied, really, that just becomes x to the 7th power. So since logs behave like exponents, they are finding us exponents, they're going to have a similar property. So anytime that you have log of a product, we can actually rewrite that as log base b of m plus log base b of n. And then a reminder that the equal sign means that each side is actually equal to each other. So sometimes we'll kind of go the other way. We're going to have two logs being added and we'll simplify it to be a single log of a product. We'll see that in the next page or so. So for example, just to kind of see how this would work out. If you have like log base 2 of, let's pick some simple numbers, 4 plus log base 2 of 8, I could simplify this to be log base 2 of 32 according to that property. And so let's see why that would make sense. Well, this part right here, log base 2 of 4, that's saying 2 to what power makes 4? That would be a 2. And this says 2 to some power makes 8. That would be a 3. So we have 2 plus 3. So we got 5 going on over there. And then when you look down at using that property, this says 2 to some power is 32. Well, that has to be 5. 2 to the fifth power is 32. So the property kind of makes sense with that example. Next, we have the quotient rule. So again, thinking back to exponents, because logs are behaving like exponents. You have x to the fifth over x squared. What was our deal with that? Well, we actually end up subtracting the exponents. This will become x to the third. And that was because if you remember, if you have x to the fifth, it's x, 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 x. And then we have on the bottom x and x. And so we're able to say that x over x, well, that's just going to be a 1. And then there's another x over x. That's just a 1. And so then all we have left is x, x, x. So it's kind of like those guys were subtracted off. They were divided out. So we have this subtraction idea. So when we look at logarithms, if we're dividing log base b of m divided by log base b of n, it should look a little familiar there that we're going to be subtracting. And similarly, if we um, try a little example, using my little base 2 because that's some nice numbers to work with. If we have log base 2 of, let's say, 8 over 4, this is supposed to be equal to log base 2 of 8 minus log base 2 of 4. According to our property, the division changes into two logs of subtraction. And if we kind of simplify this, this will be the 3. This will be a 2. 3 minus 2 makes a 1. On the left side, log base 2 of 8 over 4, well, that just can simplify to 2, but log base 2 of 2 is saying 2 to what power makes 2, and that's 1. So you can kind of see with that one example that it's working like we expect. 
So there's one other last property of log, that's the power rule. And um, this is really similar to the product rule up above because that's what m to the p is. It's a product. It's like m times m times m times m. Like you're going to keep doing that multiplication p times. And so the property up above says, oh, well, if you have a product of um, things inside your logarithm, then you're going to rewrite this like log base b of m plus log base b of m plus log base b of m. And you're just going to like keep doing that p times. But those are really all like terms. So that really becomes p of these log base b of m guys. So you put the p there. So it's like the exponent gets to come up to the front. And we're going to use that property a lot as well. So like a little smaller example, if you'd like, if you have log base 2 of, let's see, 4 to the second power. This is really log base 2 of 16, which 2 to what power makes 16? That would be 2 times 2, 4 times 2 times 2 is 16. So that would be 4. But using the property, we could rewrite this as 2 log base 2 of 4. But log base 2 of 4 is saying 2 to what power makes 4? And that would be a 2. And we have a 2 here. So 2 times 2 makes 4. So you can see that happening.